The federal lawmakers in the Senate have thrown out a bill which seeks the provision of special grants to Lagos State. The bill titled the Lagos State Special Economic Assistance Program is seeking a 1% grant from the federal government from the shares of the revenue occurring to the federal government. The sponsor of the bill, Senator Ulu Remitinwu, argues that although Lagos State generates much of Nigeria's income outside the oil sector, the economic activities and huge population of the state places a huge strain on infrastructure and services in the state. Channels Television spoke to lawyers on these issues and this is their reactions. I believe we need here in Lagos to be accorded that status and a nice hefty chunk of the revenue according to government be apportioned to Lagos. We can't avoid the fact that we're in the forefront of uh, commercial capital in Africa. So if we want to retain that spot, I think uh, it's a very laudable idea. It's a bill that should be reintroduced. It's a matter that should be discussed. In Nigeria, unfortunately, you see this person will say, I'm a Yoruba man. The other person will say, I'm an Awusa man. The other person will say, I'm, an, I'm from Igbo land. You have the Nupe, you have the Shakiri. But nobody is saying I'm a Nigerian. Nobody is putting Nigeria forward to say, let us discuss, let us find solution to Nigerian problem and pull and say Nigeria first. And until we come to that level, development will elude us. In spite of the capital moving to the FCT, Lagos continues to attract a high migration. High migration because this is uh, where the major seaport is. This is where a lot of economic activity is. It is, it is still the economic capital of Nigeria. The only thing was it came at the wrong time in the sense that there are some issues in the Senate, uh, political issues that uh, made them to throw away the, that bill. What they did was actually throwing away the baby with the bathwater. And uh, I believe that uh, that bill at the appropriate time should be revisited. The River State Government has commissioned a new law center for the Nigerian Bar Association in Port Harcourt, the River State capital. The state government is optimistic that the new facility will support judicial's effort in the interpretation of the nation's laws. Seven months after the foundation stone was laid, lawyers and judges are here again for the commissioning of the now completed project. The Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice kicks off the event with remarks that reflect the feelings of the learned professionals at this event. It is incumbent on me to thank His Excellency for delivering on his promise made on the 29th day of February 2016. The Chief Judge of River State believes that the new building provides a more conducive atmosphere for lawyers to work. No doubt this edifice will aid and enhance the activities of the Nigerian Bar Association Portacourt and even other local branches. The Governor of the state, Nyeson Wike, states that relocating the center from the premises of the High Court was expedient to preserve the functionality of the bar in the state. Over time, the size of the center has become unsuitable as a one-stop shop for the association, given the exponential growth of the Portagot Bar. Two, for the previous location where access to the center was subject to the control and convenience of the state's chief judge or the governor, thereby undermining its functionality. The president of the NBA is delighted to be performing this role just a few weeks after his assumption of office. He then proceeds to cut the tape, signifying the official commissioning of the building. And to some court stories, the ECOWAS Community Court of Justice has declared the arrest and continuous detention of former National Security Advisor Colonel Sambo Dasuki as unlawful and a violation of his fundamental human rights. Delivering the judgment on the suit filed by the former National Security Advisor against the federal government, the three-man panel of the court, presided over by Justice Friday Umwoke, ordered the federal government to release him immediately, having detained him illegally without trial since the 5th of November 2015. 
The court also ordered the federal government to pay the sum of 15 million naira as compensation to Colonel Dasuki for unlawfully detaining him, invading and seizing his properties without a valid search warrant or an order from a court of competent jurisdiction. The court further held that investigating Colonel Dasuki for allegedly committing or planning to commit a crime is not enough ground to detain him for over seven months without trial. Meanwhile, the federal government has agreed to consolidate all the criminal charges filed against the former National Security Advisor, retired Colonel Sambo Dasuki. Counsel to the former NSA, Mr. Joseph Daudu, says to put him on trial in different courts will amount to double jeopardy. Dasuki had been put on trial before two different courts, both at the Federal High Court. Moving on, the Code of Conduct Tribunal has found the former minister of Niger Delta, God's Day Orubebe, guilty of non-declaration of landed property and has ordered the seizure and forfeiture of the property. The former minister has been accused of not declaring the landed property at Plot 2057 Asokoro District as part of his asset declaration as a public officer. According to the prosecution, Mr. Arubeba refused to declare the property and neither did he honor the Code of Conduct Bureau's summons to explain why. Arubebe, on his part, told the tribunal that the land no longer belonged to him as he had transferred it to one barrister, Akimumi Ajibola, in lieu of his two-year house rent. Delivering judgment, chairman of the tribunal, Dan Ladi Umar, held failure of the alleged new owner to register the document of the said property at the land registry renders the transfer null and void. As such, the property still belonged to Mr. Rubebe, who is to forfeit it to the federal government immediately. And still at the Code of Conduct Tribunal, the tribunal has rejected an application by the Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, asking the chairman, Mr. Danladi Humar, to disqualify himself from hearing the case of alleged false declaration of asset on the grounds of bias. After three months of recess, the Senate President, accompanied by some lawmakers and supporters, makes his way into the Code of Conduct Tribunal for the continuation of his trial on allegation of false declaration of assets. His arrival elicits cheers from his supporters. He takes his time to exchange pleasantries with his legal team, and his supporters also enthusiastically exchange banters with him. At the last proceedings of the tribunal on the 8th of July, the Senate President had filed an application accusing the Chairman of the Tribunal of Bias following a statement he made on the 7th of July that the defendant must face the consequences of his trial no matter how much he delays the proceedings. In the motion argued by his lawyer, Paul Erukuru, the Senate President had said the statement was prejudicial and that he was not confident of getting a fair trial at the Tribunal. However, in his ruling, the chairman of the tribunal first apologized for the comments made on the 7th of July, but he declined to disqualify himself from adjudicating the case on the ground of the comment. According to him, as human beings, we are bound to make mistakes, and it is only the Almighty God that is infallible. He wonders why no one had taken the time to verify the said comment and that his statements were misconstrued because the alleged comment was not intended to prejudice the defendant. Mr. Omar says the tribunal would continue notwithstanding the criticisms that have trailed the trial. He says he would have handed off the case, but he is constrained by the provisions of the Code of Conduct Tribunal, which has not been conferred on any court to adjudicate over cases of abuse of public office and false declaration of assets. He also states that as chairman of the tribunal, he can only be removed when he has reached retirement age or via an address by the President of the National Assembly, other than that, there is nothing the National Assembly can do to remove the chairman. He concludes that the allegation of bias in the instant case is based on hearsay and not verifiable facts. He therefore threw out the application for lack of merit. Meanwhile, in a separate case, an FCT High Court has struck out a two-count charge of criminal conspiracy and forgery filed against the Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, his deputy, Ike Ekwere Madu, former clerk of the National Assembly, Abubakar Meikasua, and the current deputy clerk of the Federation by the Federal Government of Nigeria. 
Trial judge Justice Yusufu Halilu struck out the charges following an application by the prosecuting counsel. Mr. Omar told the court that the charges against all four accused persons are withdrawn because the subject matter is before a court of coordinate jurisdiction. And with no objection from the defense counsel, Justice Yusuf struck out the charge and discharged all the accused persons. And that will be all for today. Thank you so much for being a part of the program. I'm Victoria Ido. Bye for now.